Welcome back to the Goonery. This week's episode, a little bit more somber than last week. Who's surprised? The Bears went into Lambeau Field primetime Sunday night and got their doors blown off of them. We, uh, I'm not going to say we talked a big game on the show last week, Brandon, but uh, it was a lot worse than I think either of us saw, either of us saw coming. And we shouldn't be surprised. Aaron Rodgers, primetime. He claims that he owns the Bears, and there's really no arguing it at this point. I couldn't help but think on Sunday, wow, I am the biggest idiot that has ever lived on planet Earth Mm -hmm. because I don't own up, I, I don't live up to being a pessimist as much as I would like to think that I am. And me and you on the show tried to talk us into possibly having a chance when really the first half didn't give us a chance. The second half was a, a completely different story. Another second half adjustment, by the way, just want to throw that out there. But um, the fact that I came into that game and I said, what if, what if, what if we knock these guys off? They're coming off for an embarrassing loss. Aaron Rodgers is already frustrated with his wide receivers. What if we catch them slipping? But then I remembered. It's Aaron Rodgers we're we're playing here. Aaron Rodgers beats us every year. And and, and, and it sucks for me to even utter those words because I have a beef with Aaron Rodgers that's deep in the rap at this point. And the fact that... If it feels like the only person that was able to figure out Aaron Rodgers and his tenure with the Bears was Vic Fangio, we don't have him anymore. We have a defensive minded guy, but I, I just think it comes down to whether you have the horses on defense or not. And unfortunately, we saw a good amount of people get exposed on defense mm-hmm. on Sunday night. Roquan Smith, a guy who wants a big contract, he did not play good at all. That was. I mean, None of them, I mean, if I'm being honest, none of the linebackers played good. No. Nicholas Morrow, Matt Adams, no matter who you put on the field, they didn't play good. And Roquan was the number one guy I wanted to talk about. I know people, we could talk about the rookie DBs all we want, but Roquan legit looked atrocious. Yeah. I mean, particularly in the run game, um, Aaron Jones just, he averaged like nine yards a carry. And it was bad. If Roquan really believes that he is, the premier off-ball linebacker in the NFL, he's got to be meeting guys at the line of scrimmage and not chasing him, tackling five, six, seven yards down the field consistently. And yeah, he might, he'll put up a lot of tackle numbers playing like that. There's no doubt about it. He's about as good as it gets as a linebacker in pursuit. But you're not a $100 million guy if you're not stuffing guys at the line consistently. And that's been the number one complaint I've had about Roquan the last few years. And the Packers exposed that in a way that I don't think I've noticed watching more than before, like more than ever before. He just mm-hmm. looked atrocious. And here's the thing. We, we, we all knew that he was better in the past game than the mm-hmm. run game. But at the end of the day, when you want to get paid like one of the top linebackers, you got to do everything, man. I'm sorry. You have to. It, it, it's not it's not a slight at him. It's not it's not, you know, putting all types of crazy expectations are on him. It's just what you expect. This, this is what you want to get paid. Like you have to go out there and perform, especially in a big game like that, too, because not for nothing. He plays like he's supposed to. He's peace. If he plays like he wants his pay grade to be, it's mm-hmm. a very big difference of what the score is what the score was let's be honest and to talk about what made a big difference um here's the thing i am very very aware of how bad the quarterback situation was last season for the bears and it came down to kendall vildor being their second cornerback and truthfully in a, a guy that was a rookie that's not ideal now when you look at it this year, go out and get Jaquan Brisket, go out and get Kyle Gordon. And there was one plan for Green Bay, the entire game, target the rookie. And, and he did not respond. No, he that, made one or two plays, and that was it, man. That was it. And and that and that's one of those things where people start to overreact. 
why didn't they draft a, a wide receiver in the second round? Right? And you you addressed the cornerback position, and it wasn't even a good one. Let's calm down, people, because this isn't a, a situation it's like Aaron Kendall Rogers. Vildor. It, it, first of all, exactly, it's Aaron Rodgers. But this is a situation like Kendall Vildor that got drafted in the mid rounds. Kyler mm-hmm. Gordon got drafted in the second round for a reason. And there's a lot of guys that you can sit there and say, oh, he got drafted in the second round. He got a steal. Just because you did not draft the guys that you wanted at, in, in the second round does not mean after one bad game, the guys are bust. We have to be more fair to these guys. And honestly, I feel like with rookies, they need to go through games like this to build character. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. And and, yeah, and, and what bigger character can you build by getting your ass headed to you by Aaron Rodgers and anybody he who was stolen to that you were guarded? I think Kyle Gordon is going to be okay. He looked bad. And but, but both can be true. No, absolutely. And I don't – the first quarter, I would say, Kyler Gordon did not look bad. He had a really yes. nice – he had a really nice pass breakup in the end zone. And at that – because I, I was taking game notes on my phone for the first about quarter and a half up until the point where I was like, all right, this is just getting ugly. I'm done. Yeah. But that was not – that was the thing that I have in bold. Kyler Gordon pass breakup in the end zone. It, that impressed me at the time and he had a great coverage and a tight space Aaron Rodgers in the end zone now don't get me wrong if that was Devontae Adams last year if Devontae Adams was still in the Packers yeah. Kyler Gordon's not breaking up that pass He's but when you're throwing to Alan Lazard it's okay yeah and that game is going to do more good than any game he has all year yeah because that feeling is something that he is never going to want to feel again i don't think i've ever seen other than cody parkey if i'm being completely honest i don't know if i've ever seen a single bears player get trashed on twitter for more more for one performance in a game while it's going on than kyler gordon this past week which is crazy and and that includes mitch trubisky (laughs) yeah yeah because let's be honest i I think that the, the the precise moment that people turned on trubisky was in 2019 when they were playing the New Orleans Saints. It felt like they couldn't even move the ball, and they got blown, got the yeah. doors blown off them on their own field. But you're right, though. And everybody is asking the question, you know, George Pickens was out there. Why did you get him? Sky Moore was there. Why did you get him? But if you ask me, if let's, let's – assuming that outside of Aaron Rodgers – Mm-hmm. I don't think that Ibra Flus will put him in a position where he'll have that type of game again. Mm-hmm. But granted, you got the Eagles on the schedule, on the schedule. You got the Bills on the schedule. Got Miami on the schedule. Those aren't are hard. Those, those, aren't, those aren't easy tasks, oh, especially for no. Kyle Gordon. And here's the thing. I'm not worried about who the number one guy is going to be that he's going to be defending. He's not, he's not be defending the number one guy. You know who the number one guy is? Jalen Johnson, which, by the way, has been as good as it gets this year so far. Solid as a rock. And we expected this. This is the guy that th- the real cornerstone of the Chicago Bears defense, if we're really, really being honest. And mm-hmm. I think considering that people are not throwing the Jalen Johnson side, I don't think Kyler Gordon can continue to regress I think the more reps you get, the more you see in the NFL, the game is faster, bro. The game is faster. So, mm-hmm. of course, things are going to pick up for him. So all, all these people that try to, to come up with these 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 theories of, of, of how Poles is not helping out fields because he went deep into the second round, bro, it's the second game. I remember after the first game, there were people that were sitting up there saying Aaron Rodgers is not going to have a good season because of the guys he's throwing to. And look what he did the, the next game. Granted, less of competition. We we are on a good team. And that is what it is. We're not a good team. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, this league shifts from week to week. And sometimes there are games that happen that one quarter, one team could dominate, and the next quarter, the other team would dominate. We saw that on full display with, with Miami and Baltimore last, last weekend. It happened. So mm-hmm. the fact that we jumped to all these conclusions about certain players, it, it's, 
you got to be patient. And, and I get it. As Bears fans, we are starving. We are literally starving. I think we would give up a kidney to have a Super Bowl run. Like, mm-hmm. it's that serious for us. But considering where you, you are as a, as a roster and the, the fan knowing where the roster is, who is starting on this football team, who's getting the chances, you have to be patient because you don't have any choice. And if you're not, why be a fan of this team? You are, you are bound to get yourself disappointed. Mm-hmm. So if you are expecting a playoff run, wild card run, a Super Bowl run, then you're you're not being that you're not being the guy that I want to be around as a Bears fan because you're not you're not thinking you're not thinking critically and you're not thinking practically and there's no point. No, you're right. And just on the topic of people kind of jumping to conclusions, in a matter of one week it seems like the entire fan base according to twitter is out on justin fields for a couple of reasons one you have the old heads who are all up in arms because justin fields came out and said that you know the players care more about the loss than the fans and they should there was absolutely nothing wrong with that for starters and anyone who has their panties and a bunch about that needs to grow the fuck up because you really think that you sitting at home on your chair and you're the recliner with a beer in your hand and probably in a bag of chips cares more than the guys who are lacing up their cleats at Hallis Hall every day. You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. And I don't even know how much I want to go into this just because the whole situation is absurd that Fields had to come out today. Today we're recording on Wednesday that he had to come out today and say that he apologized essentially. And it, that, that's just bullshit to me. But the bigger issue with everyone kind of turning on fields is the bears aren't giving him a chance to fail. There were not a lot of bright spots in my opinion from him on Sunday night. He only threw the ball 11 times and he missed uh, St. Brown on one play that he really Mm -hmm. shouldn't have, but that's whatever. I think the number one thing I'm the most concerned with, with Justin Fields is his pocket awareness. Yeah. Yeah. He can, don't get me wrong. He, almost he probably a top five running top five quarterback with his legs in the league right now and when he's in the open field he's dangerous but I counted four self sacks by Justin Fields on Sunday night alone that were reminiscent of Eli Manning if we're being completely honest where he saw the pocket collapse in and instead of trying to make a play he just went down he, it, it literally looked like Eli Manning back there at times. And I understand this offensive line is not good. I understand that these the receivers were having a hard time separating from the Packers defensive backs who are pretty damn good. Yeah. And you just can't have that though. He, I don't know if he's having trouble progressing through his reads. I don't know. I really don't know what's happening where, the lack of pocket awareness is coming from. So let me be <clears throat> the responsible fan here and say that Justin Fields has to play better. And there's no doubt about it. I, I, I feel like th- it's one of those things where, unfortunately, when so early in your career, you've been hit so many times that you tend to get shell-shocked and you tend to get a little <clears throat> antsy in the pocket when you don't really go through your reads and your first instinct is to probably take off on the run if there's not a guy that's open within five seconds. And mm-hmm. while that can be an issue with, you know, the receiver core that they put together, that's also an issue where you got to get rid of the football, bro. You have yeah. to. Now, I'm going to go to the other side of the token. I can't believe... And and here's the thing. Justin Fields is a good dude, so that's probably why he apologized for what he said Mm -hmm. on Sunday. But I'm going to just say he's a better man than me. Because I'll tell every single person that is telling me that I'm not the guy because I'm simply saying that the guys in the locker room that's actually on the field to put in the work care more than the fans that are, that are on the couch drinking a damn beer and not even attempting to get active at any point throughout the week, leading up to the game, saying that they care more, and you're upset about that? 
Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. I want you to really like, like, think about it. Fans, did y'all put a game plan together? Did y'all practice this week? Did you did you run a route? So so for for anybody that's going to sit sit there and say he's on thin ice because basically saying that the fans don't care and and just the, just how badly people decipher this is it 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 just it just tells me that people just have a lack of comprehension skills. It's got to be it's got to be that because there's no way I don't and I don't give a damn about how people feel about Justin Fields. He's going to be a pariah for the rest of his career because you, and you want to know why? And I'm going to take it here. The reason why he's going to be a pariah for the rest of his career, because he's, he's following in the, in the footsteps of every black quarterback prior to him. Not for the Bears, but I'm talking about in general. Every black quarterback gets judged on a different scale. So when you see, for example, Lamar Jackson, he loses a game last week, which he had nothing to do with, nope. but they're still going to point to him. Say that oh he should have made more plays so the Dolphins could could have they could have catch up right and here's the thing I don't I know people are going to be upset at me for bringing the, the the race factor into this but but you can't tell me that Mitchell Trubisky had this long of a leash he did it he did it mm, and, not at and, all and one thing that to me is is the most egregious is everybody just seems to give up so fast on on the guy that y'all were y'all were hyping up the whole season and let's let's be honest there's context that needs to be addressed here when it comes to justin fields he i'm sorry 28 times the fact that people are jumping to conclusions after 28 passing attempts and not just and here's the thing, 28 passing attempts. I'm sorry. Is he calling the plays on the sideline? Uh, l- listen, I would like to see Justin Fields throw the football more. You would like to see Justin Fields throw the football more. We get it. But to place the blame on him, for what? For what? If, if anyone deserves blame, I'm sorry. We got we to take it there. Luke Getze, you got you to gotta call some more plays and put your guy in a better position. That if that's what it really boils down to, everybody's talking about Justin Fields' development, this and that, and the third. You gotta put your you gotta put your quarterback in better positions, because we we want to change from Nagy. I'm not gonna say say it's the complete same thing, but if you're not putting your guy in this in the right position, the co- the conversation is going to start on whether mm-hmm. did he really upgrade from Matt Nagy. I mean, granted, there's a lot of it's, it's very easy to upgrade from Matt Nagy. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like it was, it was that bad. But let's just say on Sunday against Houston, which by the way, I know they got Derek Stingley, but that rest of that, the rest of the secondary can be had. Oh, so yeah. if he has 11 pass attempts again, I don't want to hear a single word about how Justin Fields is not progressing because at the end of it, because at, at that point, it will be Lou Getty's fault. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I will be very surprised if Justin Fields does not come out and throw a minimum of 20 passes this week against the Texans. I genuinely would be surprised. And yes, I understand that the running game is probably going to feast against the Texans this weekend. Absolutely. Let me just say I'm eating crow after one week where with David Montgomery just shit talking him. David Montgomery looked like a world beater <laughs> against the Packers on Sunday night. And it looked, he he ran like that that picture that everyone always tweets out that described him as a Frankenstein type of running yeah. back. He ran like that this past week. Absolutely. It, Absolutely. It, it was really, really nice to see, but there were absolutely no other bright spots on the offensive side of the football there than David Montgomery. We can- I will say this, though. There was two guys that impressed me on the offensive line. Okay, I, I know where you're going with this, I think. Look, Braxton Jones for a second straight week. Mm-hmm. He is not perfect, and you cannot, under any circumstances, expect a fifth-round rookie to be perfect. But he's damn good enough to start on a lot of offensive lines. 
And my second guy, I almost feel bad for him, but I don't at the same time because I feel like there's going to be a time where he is going to be a regular on offensive line. Mm -hmm. Tevin Jenkins is a mauler. He helps the run game in so many Mm -hmm. ways, and I am literally salivating. I'm in love with him. I'm in love with him at guard. He I. When he, gets his, when, when he gets his feet under him and has more than three weeks of practice at guard, this time next year, Tevin Jenkins is going to be – three weeks from now, three weeks from now, Tevin Jenkins is going to be a bad motherfucker at guard. It is impressive how fast he's taken a guard. And, 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 and you it, know it's something? Perfect. It's, it's been perfect. And, and you know what? Lucas Patrick get, getting back and have him be at center is going to help so immensely. Oh. And and I'm I'm sorry. Do I know my favorite part of that video that got tweeted out today too? What was that? The fact that Mustafer was the guy taking the snaps, the shotgun snaps. Man. When I saw it's... when they when they announced the starting offense on Sunday night football, and I saw Mustafer come across as the center. I, I I audibly I, 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 I just let out there. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, like it's it, just like what like the jury's out. You know what you're getting out of Mustafer. <laughs> but you the but I the funny thing about Mustafer, and here's the thing. I don't know shit about playing off its line in any any level of football. What does Olin Crute see in Sam Mustafer? That's a question for Owen Cruz because I, I I do not get it. He had one half year where he was de- he was decent. I'm just like, wow, he could be a staple on offensive line. And then after that, he just fell apart. And the funny thing is, last year or the year before, he wasn't even the best Notre Dame offensive lineman on the freaking <laughs> on the roster. If you put Alex Bars in there, I guarantee he would have did better than him. But since we're on the topic of its alignment, I will be shocked, absolutely shocked, if Larry Borum is continued to be right tackle for the rest of the season. I thought he played good last week, but there are I, I noticed this because I noticed this last year too. It's very inconsistent with him. Yep, he's very inconsistent, and one he and and I feel like his technique. Is not, is never consistent enough to handle pass rushers. And granted, he plays in the NFC North. He's going to face some dogs. He's going to face some dogs. And you know what? I would I would be so much more comfortable Braxton Jones going up against those guys. Larry mm-hmm. Borm is not that What's guy. It? He's not that guy. And I, I'm just not to say he's a bad football player, but he's just a very inconsistent football player. And truthfully. If Riley Reeve takes over at, the, at right tackle, I mean, I want to be I, I said it all. I thought that I, was, I thought that think, was the purpose. I honestly think it's only a matter of time. I I had that same take, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Leatherwood get in there either. Yes, I forgot about him too. I mean, honestly, I forgot about him. It's a first round talent. I mean, just yeah, see what you got at this point. I mean, this season. <laughs> They're going to win. I don't know how many games, but it doesn't matter how many games they win. It's all about progression. And if you have a guy who's just sitting there on the sidelines, first round talent, why, it, it, sometimes guys just need to change the scenery. Yes. We had that conversation about various players on this team before already. Why not him? And I'm going to give you my dream scenario. If some way, somehow, Larry Borum is off that offensive of line. Okay, whatever. But what about the idea of Leatherwood playing guard and shifted, take it, and Tevin Jenkins back to right tackle? I don't hate that either. I, I don't hate it either. But it brings up kind of the same concerns you have with Borum, in my opinion, where you always know that Tevin Jenkins is going to be a mauler in the run game. Right. And I feel like kicking him inside to guard can cover up some of those deficiencies he has in the pass protection game. Right. So I don't know if you mess up having a good thing at right guard with Tevin Jenkins right now, just because is it better to get 
great run blocking from both of them. Pretty good run blocking from the both of them at right guard and right tackle. I I don't know. I, I don't know how you look at that situation, but I'm of the opinion that Jenkins has been successful at guard so far. Why take him out of a successful situation? That is true. However, the only reason why that idea came to mind is because let's be really honest about something. Tevin Jenkins is already already kind of in a fucked up situation considering he's being a rotational piece. So considering that, if if you want to try him out there, sure, I get it. But if Leatherwood eventually takes over at right tackle, it just would it would make sense considering he's got the reps there when he we came to the Bears. So it would make it would make a lot of sense. Yeah, and there was there's two other things, two other people. I guess I kind of want to touch on with on the offensive side of the football for the bears. First and foremost, the clock is ticking with Cole Komet, man. Oh, he was dreadful. He, he He was dread. I mean, he can't block. He can't get, he couldn't block me on Sunday. What are you doing, man? He's a, you're a second round pick. And I know everyone calls Notre Dame tight end. You, It, it, at least it seems that way. Notre Dame, in Iowa, if I had to guess, probably have the most starting tight ends out of any two schools in the NFL. Cole Komet, I'm going to say it, he's dog shit. Like, he's not a good football player. And it's not good when through two weeks, him and Darnell Mooney have combined for how many yards? Four, I believe it is. It's not good. I forgot I think, what the number was. I think it's this. four yards between the two of them in two weeks. And Mooney at least has a track record. I genuinely do think Mooney's going to figure it out. I think it's more of a situation where you kind of come to terms with the fact that Darnell Mooney isn't a true number one receiver. If you haven't yet, I think the both of us have come to that conclusion a long time ago that he's going to be a very good number two if you get someone else there with him. It just, he's, in my opinion, he's not that guy who's going to be able to Beat your Jair Alexanders one-on-one. The the only reason why I'm going to disagree is because what sample size do we really have to go off of at this point? Oh, and I agree. I mean, 28 passes through two weeks. Yeah, (laughs) like nothing's being shared. I I agree. I I agree with that for Mooney. But for Cole Komet, a guy who's supposed to be the safety blanket, Fields hasn't even been looking his direction for checkdowns when situations have been there and I just I'm 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 declaring this right now after week two 2022 I am officially out on Cole Komet there's one more week I I think out of every offensive player this is is including Mustafer because Mustafer I was just it, it genuinely made me angry watching him play. He just stinks. I'm sorry. He stinks. Hope all the crews don't knock me out because of it, but he stinks. Hey, <laughs> you wouldn't be the first. <laughs> but, but Cole Komet, I mean, if you can't catch, if you can't run routes, you can at least block, and you can't even do that. You can't even do that. And let's, let's be honest. There is a guy that Justin Fields built chemistry with at the tight end position a year ago, and he's no longer on this football team. Jesper Horstead could do better than Cole Komet at this moment in time. And I am mean, I am not an out joking when I say that. And here's the thing. If Ryan Griffin is getting more and more playing time, I guarantee you, you're going to see he's probably better than Cole Komet. If James O'Shaughnessy could get more playing time, I'm sure we will see that he is better than Cole Komet. There has been so many times throughout his career where people say, he's going to break out, he's going to break out. It's only a matter of time. When? Mm -hmm. When is it going to happen? Because he's in his, what, third, fourth year as a pro? I believe third. I believe third. No more excuses, bro. Nope. No more. That's it. 
And people drafted you as a number one tight end, by the way, in fantasy. So they so obviously people thought that you was going to mm-hmm. be the security blanket. You you could have probably been the number one target for Justin Fields. And all you've done is not not you either not get open, you drop passes, yeah. and you can't even block. What are you do? What what are you doing? You're burning calories. You're in the Evan Ingram stage of your career right now. You're burning calories. You're not doing anything. And do I know what is the sad part? I would rather have the fossil of Mercedes Lewis that the Packers have at tight end over Cole Komet right now. And I have no regrets. No, I don't even hesitate to say that. And that's just, that's, that's fucked up. You know what? You, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to take it even, even further. Uh, Jimmy Graham could make those catches that Cole Komet got thrown. He got mud in his shoes. <laughs> he can't move work then. But it's one thing about Jimmy Graham. And it is a contested catch. He was going to make it. Yeah, yeah. And it's not looking too good for Cole Komet this week against the Texans either. Looking at the numbers that tight ends have put up against the Texans through two weeks, Mo Ali Cox in week one and the Colts had nine targets. So he got open for five five catches and 48 yards. All right, that I would take that from Cole Komet if we're being – Oh, 100%. And then in week two, I'm not I'm not even beginning to try and pronounce the Broncos tight end at this point because I, I know I'm not, not going to say it right. He had four targets for one catch, 22 yards, and a touchdown. Yes, that it was a pretty good catch. Too. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it was a good catch, but yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that puts that at that's six catches for 70 yards and a touchdown over two weeks for tight ends against the Texans. I mean, that's not – I bet that's pretty league average if I had to yeah, get Yeah, I would say so. And it's just – when you're as bottom of the barrel as Cole Komet, I'm, I, I'm, I'm betting it's going to be a lot closer to the one catch for 22 yards and a touchdown than it is nine targets for five catches. And hey, you know what the funny part is? Ryan Griffin going to have like four of them and probably was score a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So after week two, there's two winnable games coming up for, for the Bears, if we're being completely honest. Texans are coming to town, and Texans are frisky. I, I mean, that's yeah, they are. describing them. They're frisky. Davis Mills is not as bad as people seem to think he is. They have some talent on the offensive side of the football. They have a true number one wide receiver, by the way. Yes, they do. Like, Brandon, Brandon and Cooks Brandon Cooks is off. so underrated, and it's every year people just forget about him. He's 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 great. And their number two, his name is slipping my mind right now. He's Nico been, Collins. Yes, Nico Collins has been pretty solid. Looked like they were featuring Damian Pierce more last week that people kind of been predicting all along. And they have kind of a log jam at tight end. And they just brought in Jordan. Yeah. And then they just brought in OJ Howard a couple weeks ago. Week one, he caught, he had, I think, two receptions, two touchdowns. And yep. I mean, there is some talent on the offensive side of the football there. They're playing against Lovey. Lovey's coming home. I'm, I'm expecting a win, if we're being completely honest. I am expecting a win. And that's crazy to say after just getting embarrassed at Lambeau on Sunday night. And I wouldn't be surprised if they beat the somehow 2-0 and New York Giants the following week. So, Texans is a very winnable game. I think that that's one of those games where it's going to be really ugly, 17-13, no, sure. turnovers, stuff, stuff like that. And I, I feel like with this regime, I feel like when losses happen, character will be built. Mm-hmm. Won't be one of those things where you know we gotta find out the whys and all this other bullshit that they got told for the past couple of years. I don't think it'll be that, but I do think it would be more of what did you do wrong on uh, su- uh Sunday night? A lot of missed tackles, lack of execution on offense, um, missed blocks. You can name it. It was it was just a very ugly performance from the offense and the defense too. But I feel like with this regime, there will be lessons learned. However, the Giants game scares me. A, you know, I live in New Jersey. I got friends who uh, um, watch the Giants every Sunday. My girlfriend, mm-hmm. Giants fan. And one thing that I saw from this weekend, 
past two weekends, actually. The Giants defense is going to give us hell, and I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. Their blitz, their blitz, their ability to blitz is as good as it gets in the league yeah. for what I've seen over the past couple of weeks. They had they got speed on the field on defense to where those blitzes can get can get home. And let's say you don't have David Montgomery on the field on a situation where you have to pass. And what Wink Martindale likes to do on third downs is blitz. Mm -hmm. If you have Khalil Herbert on the field on a third down when you try to pick up a blitz, you're screwed. You're yeah. just, I'm just going to tell you now. So hopefully we can combat that. If we can combat the blitzes, I think the Bears have an excellent chance of being the Giants because defensive, because offensively, they don't do like outside of Barkley, which by the way, considering what our run defense looks like, Barkley might have himself a day. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, they haven't gotten Kadarius Tony involved at all. I feel like it's just been an attempt at trying to be the Sterling Shepherd show again. In an odd so, way. so from what I've gathered is that he did not, he, he barely had a training camp, did have a preseason. So I, I'm assuming this is his ramping up period of where eventually he's going to have a bigger role in the offense. Mm -hmm. Well, let's and this is this, and, and it's not going to be the case with Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay is just not going to, it's not going to get playing time because he just, I, I, I they're out on him. The coach staff is out on him. So I, he played um, If it, there is Tony plays, yikes, watch out. That, that kid is special. He is with the ball in his head. I mean, if you tackle him on a first hit, you are you're, you're skilled because bring him out of bring him down on a first mm -hmm. hit just low key seems impossible to do. Yeah, no, I mean, he's about as shifty uh, of a guy that I remember watching in him yeah. in a very very long time. But it's going to be in, an interesting couple of weeks here for the Bears. I mean, I think I'm going to enjoy this game, these two games more than I did this last week. Because I'm going in with no expectations. I'm the idiot for giving myself expectations for a <laughs> Sunday night at Lambeau. And hey, hand up. I acknowledge that. It, <laughs> it's uh it's just, you know, Bears are back to being the laughing stock of the league after a week where it was an impressive win against San Francisco at home in the rain. And I it, it <sighs> I really am fighting the urge to have any type of expectations, but there is something that is telling me that they've heard all the noise. They've heard everybody talking about how there are individual wide receivers who have more catches than the actual receivers of the bears yeah. in total. I feel like they hear that stuff and they're, they're going oh, to it, adjust. It, it's bulletin board material for sure. I mean, I don't care how bad, that the rest of the league thinks these guys are they're still nfl football players they don't like yes. being told they suck when you're at the top more likely than not you're gonna have a little bit of a fragile ego in my opinion and yeah these are all guys on this team right now who are trying to prove something so there there's no one on this team on the offensive side of the football i should i should say other than justin fields for the time being none of their jobs are safe by any stretch of the imagination mm -hmm. So they are going to do whatever they can to impress people. And the fact that Equiminia St. Brown has been who I've probably been the most impressed by on the offense yeah. at this point in the year, he's carving himself out a role. I mean, no one, I didn't expect a thing out of him. And yet he's their only receiver on this team who's consistently gotten open this year. And you know what? You will live with that. If, if, you, if you're going to tell me that Darnell Mooney is not the leading receiver, that tells me he's only getting warmed up. But if you have a guy at Equinibia St. Brown who's actually, who actually has a role on a team because not for nothing, St. Brown was that guy in Green Bay that would take over if a guy got, got injured. Mm -hmm. And now that we've seen what he could do, I'm, I'm more than fine with him being a leading receiver right now because that tells me that Darnell Mooney, his opportunities are going to open up. And when it does, he's going to explode. Mm-hmm. So kind of just moving on from the Bears, uh, just a quick league wrap up from the weekend. It really just seems like the Bills are undoubtedly the team to beat at this point. I mean, 
Josh Allen is so good, man. <laughs> like, it's I, unbelievable how good he's gotten and how quick he's gotten that good. And it's funny, too, because <laughs> two things. Number one, I saw a video of Josh Allen recently on Twitter. I saw, I, I saw you retweet that. Yep. Yes. And people forget he was wildly inaccurate. He had all the arm talent in the world. He can make he if he was the guy in terms of you want to you want to have a highlight tape of arm strength. You just have to play his his his, his highlights. It doesn't matter what year it is. You just play his highlights. And one thing that the Bills was with Josh Allen, they were patient. They waited, they waited, they waited, and they got their guy. He is a franchise quarterback, and he is in the conversation with being of being the best quarterback in the league. He is that good. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens when you have patience. Let's keep that in mind as Bears fans. And also another thing to keep in mind as Bears fans, too, one of the biggest criticisms – and I, I I hate to bring it back to the Bears, but I just have to make a point because a lot of people just, you know, they like to pick and choose what kind of uh, narratives like to push. Mm-hmm. The, uh, Sean McDermott is a defensive guy, by the way. Yep. And a lot of and a lot of the criticism of the Bears hire in the offseason was they hired a defensive guy. Yeah, they should have hired an offensive guy. They should hire they should hire the, the young 31, 31 year old white male to coach him up. And maybe he he would be flourishing by now, right? It doesn't work that way. If you have a good plan in place for a guy, then he's eventually going to work out. And oh, yeah. Josh Allen's a perfect example of that. He's he's killing the league right now. Killing them. And I forgot where I heard this too. And it might have been like watching the pregame uh for the Thursday night opener with Rams Bills. Josh Allen said that the relationship that him and McDermott have is better than any relationship he's ever had with any other coach. Because McDermott just lets because McDermott just lets him, he said, McDermott lets me play how I want to play football. And yep. if you got if you have that faith, if, you can just tell yourself that you're going to be successful if you know yep. that the people who are in charge of you technically have your back. He just plays free. And I saw a tweet too. Someone compared. Josh Allen to a golden retriever with the strongest arm on the planet. And I think it's pretty accurate. It's pretty accurate considering yeah. he's out there. You always see him with a smile on his face and he just, he plays reckless in a way and it just, it works. It, it works. works. It, 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 it helps when you build like a damn brick house, but yeah, it works for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bills are clearly the team to beat in the AFC. Another team in the AFC made a uh, made a lot of noise this weekend with a huge, huge comfort behind victory on the road. Is it Mike McDaniel? Is it Tua progressing? Is it having the two fastest wide receivers in the league on the same offense? A little bit of both. I don't think it really matters. The Dolphins' offense is pretty damn good, man. And you know what? Something told me to stay away from Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, at least in my money mm-hmm. leagues, because you just don't know. You don't know how many how, how many bulls are going to be chasing, and then they're going to hit the ground at some point. And it, a lot of it had to do with Tua being wildly inaccurate, and we and we know this. Tua has arrived. He has arrived, and everything everything that you said, whether it be McDaniel having Waddle and Hill, and everything everything rolled into one it's it's actually working and the fact of the matter is this sometimes that's all you need you have wide receivers you need wide receivers that you can trust and you can just fling the 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 hell out the damn ball and just hope they just hope that that fast ass person is going to come down with the football and that's exactly what they have and honestly you know, if you have an offense that let's go to air it out, and you have the guys who go 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 get the damn ball, you keep doing that, mm-hmm. and they and it's working to perfection right now. And truthfully, I was very very skeptical on whether the Dolphins could be a playoff team. You have Cincinnati struggling. You have we don't know what we have in the charges yet. Justin Herbert is is bagged up, and. 
we we don't we don't know about Baltimore or Pittsburgh or Cleveland. We don't know about these teams, and we sure as hell do not know about the Broncos at this point in time. So that being said, I think the Dolphins will make the playoffs as a wild card, but maybe maybe the first wild card. They're that good. Yeah, and I uh, funny enough, I right as the Tyreek Hill trade was rumored on. Um, MGM Sportbook, I had a $20 future bet sitting there uh, that I could use for free. And I placed that on the Miami Dolphins to win the Super Bowl. $20 free bet plus 5000 to pay 1000 bucks out. And I placed that in, I believe, so whenever, whenever that trade was, it was that week I placed that. So I don't know what the odds are at now. Do I actually think they win a Super Bowl? No. But for a free bet, I'm I'm willing to take willing to take that risk. And they are making the playoffs. I like don't even have an ounce of worry when I say that because the AFC East looks like dog shit, aside from those two. Honestly, let's let's call what it is. The entire AFC is sorry. Sorry right now. And the, and it, this is lit, and it's only because it's a product of who we thought was going to be contenders, mm-hmm. you really don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a very good way to put it, if we're being completely honest. Yeah. And it looks like the uh, AFC West is going to kind of eat itself eat itself alive, if we're being yep. honest. I mean, the East is just weak. I mean, and, well, it's not weak, considering it's it top heavy. Well, it's top heavy, yes. The AFC South, that is my – I mean, that's whew. the word – I'm going to say it. That's the worst division in the big four sports and it's worse than the AL central in baseball. And I, as a white Sox fan who team was the heavy favorite third best world series, that's not going to make the playoffs. Now. I, I don't even think it's an exaggeration to say that that's the worst division in sports. You're going to say an eight and nine AFC South winner. That's Mm -hmm. how bad a division is. And the funny thing is from everything that I've seen so far, Jaguars probably could have the best chance of winning the division, which is insane. <laughs> you just like just think about that because t- the Titans they have no weapons. They have no weapons. Derrick Henry is going to be waiting to the ground. There and, 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 and by the way, a by the way, Malik Willis might take over this season. I'm just going to warn. I'm going to warn you. He's, he might take. That's see how him. bad it's going to get. We will see Matt him. Ryan before. done tricked us because. <laughs> I don't know if it's Matt Ryan or Frank Wright is not as good as we think he is. It's one of the two. And both of them might play themselves out, out of uh, Indianapolis after one year. And you have Houston, which if you tell, like, if Houston wins on Sunday against us, granted, it's not a signature win by any means or anything like that, but it would tell me that possibly that they would have a chance this division is so up in the air right now it, it, it yeah. it's sort of on its surface at the moment because because things will change and i think there's a clear favorite in this particular division but nfc east is up in the air right now you have two undefeated teams right now you have the cowboys was one and one and the commanders is only two i think the, i think commanders stuff will turn around turn around for them and i i i feel like those division will lose Wait, what was that? It's the Eagles' division to lose. If you ask. I, and you, and I, I want to bring back something that I said about the Eagles at our preview show. All they need Jalen Hurts to be good. They're a Super Bowl contender. He absolutely carved up the Vikings' defense. The same Vikings' defense that carved up Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. the same Vikings' team that absolutely shredded the, the secondary of the Packers, yeah, that team. And what did I say about Kirk Cousins? Kirk Cousins is is will give you a reason to be happy, and then and then the night and then the sun goes down, and everything just goes to hell. So, Eagles right now, I mean, you are talk about a complete team. They are the closest mm-hmm. thing to a complete team in the NFC right now. I know the, I know Tampa Bay's defense is amazing, but. Fucking his offense don't move me. Mm-hmm. I know I picked the Saints 
to win a Super Bowl, I'm instantly regretting that right now. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. So Eagles right now, I think not just a clear cut favorite to win the East, but right now out of NFC, I would pick them to, I would pick them to go to the Super Bowl. They're that good. Yeah, and I don't. I know it's a knee-jerk reaction after week two, but I still don't think it's crazy. I'm looking at division winner odds on FanDuel right now. Just have it pulled up as we're talking about this. The Buccaneers have the shortest odds to win their division at minus 460. So for those of you who don't bet, that's $460 to win 100. You're, you're not placing that bet. Philadelphia Eagles are number two at the second longest or shortest odds at minus 210. And it, that, that says a lot in my opinion and just to tie it back to the AFC South real quick before we get into that Colts have the highest odds to win that division still at plus 135 that's insane the Titans plus 200 the Jaguars plus 290 and the Houston Texans at plus 1200 which means I might put a couple dollars on that for shits and giggles because that you division is that bad I would do that I would absolutely do that because listen I don't think the I don't think there's much like di- like distance between nope. Jacksonville and Houston at all. No. So I would take that bet. I absolutely would. So, but also, what are Green Bay's odds right now? I'm just curious. To win the division, they are even. So they're sitting at plus 100 to win the division. And I don't I, wonder, I don't think that is low enough if we're being honest it's not it's not but i was i'm gonna say something it's gonna hurt me to say this i know where you're going i think the lines might be better than we thought yep they might be much better than we thought plus 700 I'm, I and you know what I'm like you know what at least we got the Lions we're not gonna be the Vikings we're not gonna be the Packers we beat the Lions the Lions gonna sweep us this year <laughs> they have about if they stay healthy they have about as good of a one-two punch right now on the offensive side of the football as almost anyone in the league between Swift and Amon Ross St. Brown St. Brown is I mean, I don't know where he falls in the pantheon of receivers in the league right now, but he's up at the top with how he's played the last year and a half. And you want to know what's really scary? Jameson Williams is coming around the corner. It's going to get scary for a lot of teams and that TJ come to Hawkins, Detroit. It's not hasn't gotten going yet either. It's Yes. Ugh. Ah, I'm scared. Scared. Yeah. Scared. With all that talent, Jared Goff doesn't have to be that good. He doesn't have to be that good, but is there a point in the season are you, that you're going to say, I'm not giving him any excuses for all this shit he got around him? Oh, for sure. That's 100%. But I, Jared Goff will not be with the Lions on another contract after this because of all the talent they have there, which this is insane to even say. Someone's going to want to go play quarterback for the Detroit Lions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is not a phrase I thought I would be uttering ever in my life. At all? And I can't believe I'm saying this either. I love Dan Campbell. Like, I, I, he's just such a meathead that I think he's just hard to hate. And I get why people dislike him. But he's just so dumb, I think, that I love him more. It's almost a Jameis thing. <laughs> I think I can never – because I know it's a very weird thing that I'm going to say, but they kind of just remind me just because they're just so football guy, cliche bullshit. But I think Dan Campbell reminds me a lot of Joe Judge and his football talk, and it just turns me all the way okay. the fuck off. I can't do it. I can't. Oh, I, 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 I can. I can see that. I, I, I can. I can understand why with that. And yeah, it, it was not as interesting of a week as week one, in my opinion. 
still a lot of good games this last weekend. I know we said it's the Bills are the best team in football right now, but I still think I'm, I know it's week three, but it's as wide open as I can remember in quite a long yeah. time. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I mean, it doesn't mean shit for our Bears, but for the it'll be a, it'll be fun to watch the rest of the league. It actually could mean a lot for the Bears. I'm going to tell you why. You look at the NFC East. I think the Cowboys being a Bengals is what I think. I think hell froze over. I mean, I go a lot. Yeah. I think hell froze over. But I also do think it, it is a product of how really, really bad the offensive line is for the Bengals. And it's it, it's going to rear its ugly head. Um, the NFC South could potentially have one team make the playoffs. If Jameis plays how he did on Sunday for the rest of the year, guess what? They're going to be forced to play Taste of Hill at quarterback, which means your season is over. Yep. So you have the Lions and you have the Vikings, who are most likely could be uh, wild card teams. And, and I'm going to be honest, the Giants right now, 2-0, defense is playing outstanding. I think we are the best people to tell Giants fans to relax only because mm-hmm. we've seen this movie before. Yep. You know, 2019, do you remember 2019, how good that defense was and they just couldn't put up any type of points? Listen, the only way I'll pick the Giants to make the playoffs, as crazy as it is that they are 2-0 and and the quarterback that is at the helm, they get them to 2-0 in a sense, the only way I'll pick them is Tyron Taylor being the quarterback. That's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. Dale Jones not lead that team to the playoffs. I'm sorry. I, I can't see it. And I don't know the validity of this statement, but uh, I saw the tweet saying that Odell and the Giants had conversations about a possible comeback. And Odell said he would only do it under the circumstance that Daniel Jones is not the quarterback. Well, yeah, of course. Because it's like, damn, like, I, I try to get away from Eli. Now I got the Eli's clone. No, I'm not <laughs> doing that. That's disrespectful to Eli. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> but I, I do think all roads are going to lead to him ending up in Tampa Bay. And it's kind of the same thing as last year. It's like, all right, does LA even have room for um, Odell? Oh, yeah, they do. He's, he turns out to be the number two receiver. So, yeah. Yeah. I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go back to the Rams either. I, I really, I'm not ruling that one out, but it's been funny seeing how he's been going around to all these different games so far this year, acting like he's a recruit, like a yeah, college pretty recruit, much. Like, and it, it, it's just hilarious to me. I'm like, so he's in, he's in New Orleans right now for the Tampa Saints game, but he was also at this game this week. Like it, 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 he's just all over yeah. the place. And I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see if he ends up playing where he ends. He will play somewhere this year. I don't know yeah, when definitely. it'll be, but he will be on a roster come probably mid-October. I yeah, I'd, definitely. If I had to guess. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And with that being said, it's going to wrap up this week's episode. If you made it this far, we appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, leave us a comment, review. And we will be back hopefully discussing a Bears win next week. <laughs>